On this episode of War No Dam Experts, Rebecca and Maddie share seven tips on attending Western Art Week in Great Falls, Montana. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. And I'm Maricela Hazard. And together, we're no damn experts. Welcome to the (laughs) podcast studio. If you're listening, you are missing out. We're going to want you to watch this on video format. Yeah. And listen to it with audio ears. (laughs) (laughs) We're recording in our podcast studio and we're taking video and you can see the space. So what do you think, guys? Is it better than the storage closet in the basement converted to podcast studio? Uh, The nice thing is I think the angle is the same width, so you don't get the full scope of it. But right here is a window. So if you were here in market the day we record the podcast, you could sneak in and watch us do it. Which I don't want you to do. It'll be unnerving for her. Not for me, because the window's behind me. There have been times when we are recording and guests will walk past and they're like looking like, what are you doing in there? Like, <laughs> how dare you not be there to greet me? I'm like, I have to talk to our fans, our beloved fans. <laughs> My people. Yeah. Behind me, we have just a sink. Yep. Some counter space. And then we have uh, sound panels all around. You can see the green, the gray, and the brown. The green. Gray. Brown. The orange, oh, gray, I, and the brown. Didn't even know which color you said wrong. <laughs> but either way, we're here in the studio, yep. and we thought, why not record it so you can see the upgraded equipment? And while we talk about this damn thing, our visitor guide. We put it on display right in front and, um, so the people watching know what we're referencing. And uh, just so you are prepared for video people, I brought my reading glasses because I'm of that age. <laughs> And I'm wondering why I didn't bring mine. So this I guess ep- I'll be doing the reading. <laughs> so this episode is going to be airing this Thursday, Friday, which is going to be one week out from Western, Western Art, Art week. week. Oh, you've heard us talk about it before. We're going to talk about it again. You've even heard Norma Ashby Smith talk about it before. Yeah. The inventor, founder, creator of Western Art Week. She came on and told us everything that came into making the first one. And now we're on our 53rd second. I kind of lost count because we had two I'm somewhere of them between last year. 52 and 54. Somewhere in there. I'm we're, not sure. We're getting ready for it. And then how do we count 2020? But it doesn't matter because it's happening this year. And we wanted to give you some information about next week's event. So maybe you do want to have that last minute hop in your car, or drive to Grace Falls, and enjoy a few days of Western art in every form, shape, and fashion. And also, we want to give you some tips what to do at an art show if it's your first one. Or maybe it's your 10th one and you've been doing it all wrong. Right. <laughs> Which is probably more of the case. Yes. But it's now is the time to correct it. If you've been doing it wrong all these years, Correct it now. It's it's never too late to adjust. So when we made this visitor guide, uh, Montana's Base Camp, the official visitor guide to Great Falls, Montana, our agency that helped, well, helped, that formatted, created, designed, designed all everything, said, hey, we want you to come up with some tips for Western Art Week. And Rebecca and I look at each other like, tips? Like, what do you mean? Get here. Enjoy it. Do it. Like, just <laughs> no, that's get, two. Talk to the artists. <laughs> And then we realized that not everyone is as well versed as us. And I'm say that jokingly because <laughs> right, cause me, you know, what we did is we searched a lot of the Internet and said, oh, oh that's a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. that's pretty much it is pretty much what we've been telling people. Right. We just needed to know, you know, use other people's words and then because it's more own. eloquent. Yeah. <laughs> So we have seven tips for attending your first art show, and we're going to be using Western Art Week as the example. For So if for some reason you're in D.C. 
listening to this podcast and you're going to go to some event. This only pertains to Great Falls events. <laughs> How dare you use these tips? <laughs> but the tip number one is weather is weather. Yeah. Um, so right out our windows today, it's snowing. And this event happens in March. It could not have snow. It could have snow. It could be raining. It doesn't matter. Weather is weather. It doesn't matter at all. All of these events are indoors. Yeah. So pretty much, are you going to wear snowshoes or need an umbrella right. for the 20 feet you have to walk in? And more importantly, it's Montana, so pack for everything because it could do all of it in one day. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The events are still going to happen. Get your butt here. Get to Great Falls for Western Art Week. And number two. Rebecca, do you want to read those? Do you want me to... Nope, I can do it. Okay. We are on page 35 for those of you following along. At home. At home and looking at this awesome magazine. Yeah. So tip number two is you may already be in your mind thinking it's an, you know, all of Western Art Week is oils on canvas from the 1800s. Of cowboys. Cowboy art. Yeah. Cowboy art. It's not. It is much more than that. Sure, there's plenty of that. So check your inhibitions at the door. Mm -hmm. Check your preconceived notions of what you think Western art is at the door. Mm -hmm. And start going to all the shows. There was a gentleman last year that came to Western Art Week. And his art, we talked about it before on the podcast with Amber. He came out of Helena, I think, or Bozeman. First time in Great Falls for Western Art Week. And he, boy, was he excited. His name is Cypress. Forgot his last. But his was more comic style. In my eyes, I could be wrong. Like a comic book? Yeah. And it was so different. But it was still kind of like Western themes and subjects. Completely oh. different take. And again, we need to preface everything. If we say something wrong in the art community, <laughs> yes. please know our hearts are good. Our minds are dumb. <laughs> so, so We are not artists. Nor do we. We pre- do not intend to offend anyone. We will do it inadvertently, but it's because we're coming from a place of love. Yeah. So Cypress, if you are listening and you're like, my art is not a comic book. It is not a joke. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Lo siento. Sorry for that. But there is so much more art like the jewelry. Jewelry, um, rings, necklaces. Uh, well, I don't have to list what jewelry is. <laughs> what, if you don't know what, what jewelry you? is, well, this podcast is not for you. Um, but it's also um, the wood Casey car- Curtis has been here with oh. uh, leather that's been carved into feathers. There's journals that are hand tied oh. paper. There's gu- gunpowder. That gets lit on fire and creates a very beautiful pattern that becomes art. There's scratchboard, there's furniture, there's sculptures, wood, bronze, you name it, they do it. That one woman that painted with red wine. Yes. Come on. And who doesn't love a red wine painting? I mean, Diana Rosen, who paints with dirt. Oh, soil. Sorry. sorry. So, son of sorry, a Sorry, Diana. We're like soil. five minutes in. <laughs> um, I even saw. A 1957 Chevy headlight taken off of an old vehicle and then a fish painted on top of it one year. I hope it wasn't the 57 Black Widow. It might have been, but then they really missed an opportunity to not have a spider on there. So I'm going to guess it wasn't. It's like one of the rarest cars in 57. Um, (laughs) But it's art. Hey, they did this one art at the Russell sale and exhibit sale and auction to benefit the museum yeah which is happening in august the russell will have some events this year they're doing the charlie's miniature, miniature roundup i know that's gonna be so awesome yeah that's march 18th ticketed event ticketed so there's event. very few ticketed events for western art week this is one of them that's one of them and they're gonna have food and drink from and bar okay and paintings there and amazing and they're also doing a concert at the newberry too so both events at the newberry tennessee both ticketed. tennessee jet yeah you're gonna be performing um, and then they're doing the Brush Crazy Paint Your Own Western at the C.M. Russell Museum. Ooh. But the main auction is in August. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> we're, what were Deterred. We, yeah. What were we talking about? Uh, the tips. We're on oh. number three. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> Man. I, yeah. Okay. We want you to give art some space. Um, 
So Rebecca has done this. I've done this. When we go into the CM Russell Museum, the security guards pretty much run at us, ready yeah. to pull us back. Immediately. They're like, remember what we've talked about? <laughs> yeah, we can touch some art, like the jewelry, the rugs, the uh, furniture. That's meant to be touched and enjoyed, but... Um, we aren't going to be touching the oil paintings. Nope. And we're not going to be holding our red wine and just making our own splash it. You need added. to just give some, give the art some space. And if you're not sure, ask. Because guess what? The artists are right there. Yep. The people are in the room. The people who are the creators are in the space where the art is exhibited, which leads us directly to number four. Before we get to number four, remember okay. what I was going to say about the Russell? Okay. Previous year, they had an auto fact, an auto manufacturer create the big frame around a painting, which made it look like a giant etch a sketch. Oh! And they had to work with a car maker manufacturer to make it. So fifty seven to that. There was my logic, people. Oh, a lot of connections there. But number four. Hey, talk with the artist. Yep. So as we were just saying. In depending on what show it is, they'll either be hotel rooms converted into galleries or you'll be in a convention space with some pipe and drape that sets out space or a booth, yeah. if you will, mm -hmm. for each one of the artists. The artists are there. The people who created that artwork are on site. They're right there. They can tell you what their inspiration was, yeah. where that elk was laying when they mm -hmm. took that mental image they can tell you what inspired them to do that so ask them those things when you get an emotional connection to the person who created that art and you have a better understanding of where it comes from and what techniques were used or what it, what things caused them problems you're going to love it more and when you hang it on if it is a painting because you know not all art is painting and right okay we get it if you do hang that painting in your home and you have your family and friends come over and they're like, what's that painting of? Oh, well, let me tell you. Right. It's almost as if art and tattoos should be meaningful. Right. And almost like you knew right away why that piece resonated with you so much. Yeah. And I think that's really proper art terminology. Oh, resonate. Yeah. So Randy Van Beek, who is part of the Russell Skull Society. Uh, the Skull Society. I'm sorry I have not given you a picture of where I'm <laughs> hanging your piece of artwork in my home because I still haven't fixed the frame. But um, that's a tip later. We're going to put a pin in that one. Number five. Yeah. <laughs> you can have your art sent home. So if you do see a sculpture or a rug or a painting <laughs> or a couch and you're like well i'm not quite sure how that's getting on the plane yeah because you probably flew here into great falls international airport or maybe you drove here in economical a car in a packed car and you're like well i really don't want to put that in the back with the luggage and figure out how that's gonna work because i also brought my dogs um you can have your art sent home you just literally say to the artist like hey i want to buy this can you send it to this address right and they'll be like okay it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to have to go back to my poem of residence, package this up and send it to you. And the nice thing is artists know how to package art for, for shipping. Yes. I was talking to Christina with the CM Russell Museum. Yeah. And I said that, you know, what would be awesome content to share is if one of the artists of the over 600 that are going to be at Western Art Week, <laughs> if they were just do a video of like, yep, this is what it takes to prepare to come to Western Art Week. This right. is day four of packing my art and I have to do this otherwise it'll be ruined can you just imagine let me paint a story for you with my words feel free to close your eyes unless you're driving okay <laughs> <laughs> but you're an artist and you need 55 works of art to be able to display at western art week so you have to create all 55 pieces that are going to go on display yeah. and then you have to package them and then you have to haul them and then you have to unpack them and then you have to display them in a way that make them look good. The yeah. lighting, the angles, the whole nine yards. And then you have to be pleasant to people <laughs> because you're going to get people like us that come in and go, huh? Oh, well, that's real pretty. That's a pretty picture. That's and you're just, and, and what you want to say is, it's not a picture. It's, it's a G clay or it's a, an original 
oil. And this is where it came from. And this is what it, so please be, yeah. So know what has gone into making this happen. As you could be like people that say, wow, what kind of paint did you use? They go, that's really good paint. I'm like, well, I as the artist should get the credit, <laughs> not the oil I bought. We kind of missed something on number four. Open your eyes now. If oh, I'm open done, your eyes. <laughs> done painting the picture. So we told you to talk with the artist. And if you're like me, you might have to limit how much you spend at Western Art Week. Others might have like a a black card that there's yeah there's no and spending limit <laughs> and but, they're writing it off on their company <laughs> yeah so if you are there to buy a piece great talk with them but if someone else enters that booth space or whatever is set up for that artist and you're not going to buy why don't you say thanks for your time yeah and let them visit with their other guests because you don't want to take a sale from them right that's another yeah that was included in number four but we just didn't say it because we forgot because I didn't readers. So got my glasses on now, so I'll be able to help. And for having your art sent home, you know what I did? I talked to my artist and I said, Hey, I really like this piece, but why did you pick this silver frame? He's like, Yeah, now that you say it, I don't I don't know if I like the silver either, but you know, it did kind of play off the reflection on the lake. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want wood. Right. I want a wood frame and I want some breathing room between the frame. And the the art. So he matted it. And he's like, well, what do you think? I'm like, no, no, no. I told you what I would like. Now you artistically can decide. I would like wood <laughs> and some breathing room. And then you do the rest. And sure enough, shows up at my door three weeks later. Perfect as pie. Oh, man. And then we did some renovations and husband forgot to take it off the yeah. wall. And it fell. And the, Yeah. The Which is fine. so funny because... We bought a piece. We bought a piece in August, and it's a beautiful pencil sketch, uh-huh. and it's a reproduction of the original pencil sketch. But okay. then the artist went back with colored pencils. Oh, and I know it's not colored pencils. It's not like you just picked up colored pencils, but then they Crayola. colored in <laughs> some of the elements that are in the pencil sketch. Oh. It is gorgeous. We got home, hung it up, knew exactly where we were going to put it, love it, you know, just took it as is. Everything was perfect about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then um, the nail, I hung it on because there was a piece of artwork already there, but it was lighter. And I'm like, oh, I'll just hang there. And I was surprised that it was still, it hung. Oh, no. But then overnight, it still was on the wall. And then I got up the next morning and I was walking into the laundry room and then I heard this crash. I went back out. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> got a little chip on the on the, on the the frame. It's just the frame, people. The art was still fine. The art's fine. Okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> right. So let's talk about tip number six. Children. Hey, people. You have, have one. <laughs> some people have kids. And I know everyone says that your life ends when you have children. And or it begins. Or begins. <laughs> Whatever way you want to look at the cup. So my daughter is nearly four. But last year when we did take her, nearly three, we took her. She was fine. Yes, I had to be attentive. <laughs> like a normal parent? Like a normal parent. But she was welcomed. The The artist loved her. She almost ran over the governor. Like, oh. <laughs> sorry about that. Governor Gianforte, she's cute though. <laughs> I felt like Mark's like, why are you freaking out? I'm like, that's the governor right there. And he's like, oh, it is. I'm like, yes. She almost ran him over. But anyway, they have kids too. They probably have families. Yep. And they understand that you want to support the arts at a young age. So get them used to going to art shows. And guess what? There's this thing called a stroller. If they're that stroller age, why don't you pack one? Why right. Don't bring that umbrella stroller with you and buckle them up for one of the year in the areas where there probably shouldn't be wandering hands where you're maybe a little nervous. But just put them in there. They're welcomed. Just let them know this is someone's fancy artwork, not what you drew on the wall. Right. So Which we're not keeping. <laughs> the, stuff, the stuff you drew on the wall that's going away. Yeah. So bring the kids. So the same tips we give for adults, we're given for the kids. Just make sure you're enforcing don't touch the art. Yeah. Don't touch, don't touch the art. Oh, but the other really cool thing, mm-hmm. parents only over here on this mic. 
Um, most of the exhibitors have candy in their rooms or at their booths. <laughs> Which blows my mind so, because you'll always have something to detract, distract your children with by giving them a little piece of candy. Well, hopefully it's not a sucker, like something oh, really sticky. Because right. I just see them like, where do I I'm put this? Stick this right here. That would be bad. Just right and like sold. Because <laughs> I'm buying this painting. You're not going to college. Um, joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying the painting. No, no, no. This is now your college wedding and house fun. Yeah. No, they wouldn't be hanging that painting that low. There are auctions where, uh huh. <laughs> boy, are there auctions. So I don't know about you, but anytime I'm at an auction, especially an art auction, I sit on my hands. I won't even scratch my nose because I am so nervous, like I'm bidding. Because I look around the room and I can't see people bidding. So I'm sure they're doing something minor with their hands so if i do this they're gonna be did like, i bid you bid five thousand just like <laughs> scratching your nose so, so like, that oh i get nervous but i love watching them oh, so yeah. if you see the weird person just sitting on their hands like a stiff statue in the crowd it's me <laughs> i went to march in montana their auction last year mm-hmm. and there was no sitting area available <laughs> we had to be standing in the back and we went with our friends. This is all of our first art auctions. And they have the proxy auction oh, yeah. option too. So there's people calling in on the phone. And they have, if this were, if you're looking at, if you're listening, guys, you really just need to turn You're missing. In. This is where the auction is right in front of me. Then the seats. And then on that side panel where Rebecca is, there's a long table, like a banquet table. We have all their phones set up. Oh. And these people are obviously energized. It's like the stock market, but for creative people. I can only imagine it's like the telethons they used to have back in the day where they're like, got yes. one, got one. It, it's like that. And it was so exciting. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. This one painting that they thought they're like valued at 5000 I don't know what that means on the catalog. <laughs> when they give you a catalog, they're like 5000 Like, oh, that's where the bidding starts. Right. Or that's the minimum. Or it won't sell unless we get to that number. Yeah. Yeah. So... I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Tori, who runs the March of Montana, though there was a painting that said five thousand and this baby sold for sixty thousand dollars. Oh, that's gotta be fun. Gorgeous. Like so exciting. We're with our friends, we're all like looking at each other like, what's well, what? <laughs> I got up to twenty five, oh, forty? Like it's so yeah. insane to watch and then to be in that energy, that environment. And then you get so excited that you raise your hand. And I'm the one that bought it for 60. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a great way to get energized about it. There are awesome ones to walk around, but when you can just even be in the presence of an auction. Well, not only that, but I'm going to throw that uh, out west show is having the paint around yeah. and the quick finish this year. I've never been to the paint around that's new this year. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for that, but I have enjoyed the quick finishes, which is you watch them create. Yeah. What and then they auction it off. So So you get the whole process right in front of your eyes. Last year when I was at Western Art Week, I brought my camera with me to take photos for tourism. Yeah. Those for, for your job. <laughs> for my job. Like one of them used right here. They're used all over. This one gentleman is doing a carving. Oh, and I can I take your picture? It's for this. I ask him, why why do you want to take a picture of this? Because I'm going to use it for paid media. I'm going right. to use it all over. And now it's one of the most used photos that we have. Is because he's looking up at me like, why do you want my picture? <laughs> because people that can't create it kind of like to watch you, you create, create it. it. Okay, so the paint around for this podcast episode, I was contemplating bringing in my unfinished painting. <laughs> And just displaying it right here and just, and then, just, just strolling. If you ever want to finish this painting, please make your comments on what should be added to this painting. Yeah. <laughs> so the paint around, I think that's going to be one of the most exciting things because I wonder if the artists get to pick who they sit by. How How's the seating arrangement going to be? Yeah. And do you get to preface anything beforehand? Like this is the direction I thought we would head. Or do you just all of a sudden end up with a mermaid in the middle of your mountains? <laughs> so we have been featuring guest blogs on our social media 
channels on Western Art Week Facebook page and Great Falls, Montana Facebook page. We had Dana Zier, who is going to be with the Western Heritage Artist Footprints on the Trail Art Show. Nailed it. She did at the Holiday Inn. At the Holiday Inn. (laughs) She is uh, going to, or she did some guest blogs for us. And one of the videos that is on the blog is her applying mid tones to a painting of this beautiful scenery with horses. So there's an order that things are added. Like, oh, now I'm applying mid tones. So in this paint round, are you going to be like, I'm mid tone guy? (laughs) Like, I'm just going to do mid tones on everybody's. I'm not doing any sunsets. Like, (laughs) I'm going to pass on like other. I don't. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think this event needs to be expounded upon. Or you like, just go and you'll know next year what it means. Well, I well, No, what I'm saying needs to be bigger. I want oh. them to have lifelines. I want them to have passes. I want it to be like. Like you tag someone Uno. in. Like Uno. Oh, <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? I would definitely. That would be fun. Hours of and fun. It's, and it's uh, audience participation. So you don't know yourself what's going to happen. So they did audience participation for the Sip and Dip auditions. Um, and one of the artists, it wasn't Joel who won. I forgot the gentleman's name. Asked for verbs from the audience uh, kind of like singing Mad Libs. He's yeah. like, I'm going to need a, a this or that. And my husband, they like yelled out, yell out a mood. And my husband yells out something inappropriate. <laughs> it's not even a mood. It's an <laughs> action. Yes. <laughs> it's a verb. <laughs> this is going to be PJ 13. We're going to change the rate. He yells out sex. Just, Ooh. How is that a mood? <laughs> That's not a mood. You know who's there? Sarah Justice, right next to him. Oh, no. <laughs> from the, from Paris, the Paris Gibson, Gibson Square Museum of Art. I'm like, Mark, I know her. I know all these people in this room. <laughs> Just, <laughs> don't say these things. So we can't have art, artist or audience participation because people like my husband exist. <laughs> <laughs> he ruins it for everyone. <laughs> yes, come on. That would be really cool, though. Um, but yeah, get here March 16th to the 20th to, for the paint around. Well, Rebecca and I make it audience participation. Um, hey, can we do this? And we'll just start screaming things. It'll be it'll be an epic. Yeah. An epic first time event that'll never occur again. Maybe we can have our own. Yeah, we could. Hotel Arvon is making their own show with all their artwork. Yeah. I mean... Let's just host one here at 15 yep. Overlook Drive and let's just provide some wine. Whatever and they want. your painting. And my painting. <laughs> that needs to be finished. And we'll make it an event. Okay. If you're ready to okay. sign up, let us Tickets know. Tickets will go on sale <laughs> shortly. We'll, we'll be paying everyone $25 to attend. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the tips. Oh, um, yes. We do have one more. One mm. more tip? Yeah. It's, it's kind of the one you need to get serious about respect the artist's talent and the price of the art so i've got a great story for this oh i'm ready Uh, before i tell the story i'm gonna say not all the art you're going to consume during western art week is like paid art like uh, pollo loco is going to play there's going to be dancers so there's some elements of respect that happen in that as well Mm -hmm. don't be a drunkard and scream out sing billy joel yeah don't do that kind of stuff but when it comes to respecting the artist's talent you know they can perform and they sound good and they can dance well and they can say poetry really well because they've practiced their craft Mm -hmm. so one year we were going through uh the out west show and my beautiful loving spouse and myself ended up in a room that had some really high end art in it. Okay. And by really high end art, I mean 25,000 and above. And most of the art he had seen up until that point mm-hmm. was like about 5,000 and under. Okay. Just to set the stage. So we walked in and he's looking at the art and he's like, man, that looks really, really cool. Um, it's a larger format painting and it was $35,000. And my husband was. <laughs> first response was good god why is this so expensive and of course the artist is in the room and i quickly went into damage control to not 
make the artist kick us out, which is probably what his first approach was going to be. Yeah. And I said, there's a lot of work here. And, and the guy's like, no, I got it. And he says, let me start with it's an original. So okay. there's no other thing like it at all. Mm-hmm. And what you're seeing is 25 years of me perfecting how that sun shines, how this animal mm-hmm. moves, how their horn shape. And that really helped my husband. Yeah. <laughs> understand first don't just burst out (laughs) why is this so so expensive (laughs) yeah but know that there's so much that goes into that and they're not pricing these things by the hour no and the price is what it is yeah here's the deal don't discredit their abilities by thinking it should be five hundred dollars when you don't understand the art and it was like it was like if you went to buy a Charlie Russell and you're like, why is this $1.2 million? Well, Charlie comes out from his grave. <laughs> right. Yeah. If it's something from me, yeah. <laughs> don't pay $1.2 million. Don't do it, guys. Promise. But if, they're a, if they have large name recognition, even if you don't know who they are. Exactly. They've earned the respect Mm -hmm. to charge what they do for their art this is how they make a living yeah when people think like say videographers or photographers for a second well i'm only they're only taking my photos for one hour like why is it four hundred dollars well reality you're paying for the years of experience it took for them to craft it and to show it to you in one hour plus they do everything on the back end myself who has not finished this large-scale painting hours are in that (laughs) hours so that baby when it's done it's going to be on sale for fifteen thousand dollars it's going to go up at auction don't know when or where but you know maybe by then i'll be recognized right (laughs) well it just it's the same idea as if you take your you know car to a mechanic yeah you'll get different price rates for the different quality. Yeah. Um, so really respect that artist. And, you know, just think about when was the last time you actually put a frame around something? Frames are expensive. Um, yeah. The frames are a piece of art themselves. Like at the, I've right. said this before at the Russell. I'm like, who makes these frames? Right. Because they're, some of them are ornate. Other than them are just so well crafted. Come on, people. So just the materials that go into creating it is... And then the person's time and their talents and their ability to see things that you don't. It's like the mural downtown. I was just talking with Eric Heidel about it. Okay. The living room scene that's in a basement that's got the light Mm -hmm. shining on it. I don't... It's a basic picture, but how do you create those kind of shadowed those... light elements with a spray can? I know. That's talent. I know. I saw a picture of the fox on the opposing wall. The one I used to park in front of every yeah. day. I miss my fox. <laughs> um, on Instagram, someone took a picture of it and I was like, I know that fox. I'm like, oh, that's the mural fox. But you look at it and it's so detailed and it's with spray paint. I don't know how they do it. So these people are doing... The foreshadowing, the mid lighting, the every element. Yeah. So respect what they're doing. So say you're Robert and you see a $35,000 painting that might not be in your budget today. Right. Talk to the artist and say, wow, that's gorgeous. That's beautiful. I simply can't afford that. Do you have other art? Do you have someone that is up and coming that is similar to your style that you think I might like? Ask. Because... Is there a layaway plan? Can I give you $5,000 a year until it's paid for and then I get your piece of art? Um, Maybe it's not an original. Or maybe it is an original and they did a limited run of prints. Ask about that. Because if you really want that art, find a way to support that artist. Yeah. We bought a Gigliche. G-Clay. G-Clay. We bought a G clay. So if you know what that is, it's a print that made to look like a painting. Someone who's not in the art world. I can't tell the difference. Mm -mm. Someone that is might say that, but guess what? I supported that artist. I got my fancy painting and it's big because you know, we talked about this. One of these things doesn't belong. (laughs) The size, my first Western art week, but the size of that painting, I'm pretty sure there should be thousands. Like, did you drop a one? Like, is there a piece of paper? Did you miss something? (laughs) It's a typo. 
So there are ways to still have what you want. But guess what? The artist is there. Talk to them. If they're if they're not able to do a layaway plan, they're not. Then save up. Save up. And you may not get that piece, but you might get another piece that they do in the future. Yeah. It's as easy as that. One of my most favorite pieces that I've gotten was Robert and I's first piece of artwork we both agreed upon. Oh. <laughs> that took a number of years. Yeah. And those of you that have a partner in life, you know. <laughs> it takes a while to mold them into what you, you want. want. <laughs> <laughs> but the first piece of artwork we ever bought together was an eric reese photo okay and it was a limited edition number of prints we got number two of 50 and the photo is stylized with paint over the top of it so it looks like a painting but it's a photo of a barn Uh it is so awesome see these These are the pieces of art that you can see there. How creative. (laughs) And Eric Reese exhibits at Western Heritage Artists Artists Footprints Footprints on on the Trail trail. Holiday Inn. There we go. And if you need to know where all the shows are, what events are happening, you can do that all at westernartweek.com. Yes. um, It's going to be a listing of the 16 shows. Click on that. It will give you a breakdown of that show's activities from March 16th to the 20th. Maybe they're only doing the 17th to the 19th. Or if you want a consolidated list, right up there at westernartweek.com, there's a big red button. It says events by day. Click that bad boy and you're going to get a list, a daily listing with addresses at the locations. As a reminder, the ticketed spots are going to be the Tennessee Jet concert at the Newberry on March 17th. Charlie's Miniature Roundup at the Newberry on March 18th. And then on Saturday, March 19th, which is actually Charlie Russell's birthday, there is limited spots available for the Brush Crazy event. Paint your own Western painting. If you do have kids, they will offer child care for, I believe, $5. Ooh, no cake provided. No cake provided? What? I know. The other thing that I would note, um, there's 16 shows. Yeah. And if you think... For one hot minute that you're going to be able to do 16 shows in five days, let me tell you. No. It's not going to happen. No, not at all. And that's frustrating. It is. Especially because then you're going to do a show. You're going to like, oh, I got through the Western Living and... No, Western Living and Design Show is what it used to be called. It's now the Great Western Show. Okay, so whatever Chuck's calling a show... So you're going to get through that show and then you're going to move on to another show. And then you're like, oh, no, but Pollo Loco is playing at six at the show. So you're going to want to go back. It's okay to do that. There are more years to come. You'll just have to (laughs) come back, come back again and again. And you'll likely find some of your favorite shows Mm -hmm. after some time. But with these events happening at a specific time, you better plan around the events you want to attend. Yeah. Um. I have talked with Chuck on the phone, Chuck Fulcher. And then I went to an art show at the Arvon, their holiday art show. Oh, yeah. And I was like looking at their paintings. My husband wasn't there. The credit card was. (laughs) (laughs) So I saw this smaller painting and I was like, I want that. I'm going to buy it. Let's do it. And then I look and I'm like, Fulcher. You're Chuck Fulcher. Hi, Chuck. I'm Maddie. <laughs> We've been emailing for years and talking on the phone. And whenever you call me back, you know I'm mad at you. <laughs> but he's like, oh, you're Maddie. Um, yeah, I'll make sure to get that information to you soon. So <laughs> I have a Chuck Fulcher painting in my house now. How lucky are you? I know. And Chuck's one of the people that did the bison around or the buffalo around town, too. Yeah. He's kind of like a big deal. And he's a musician. So he does like music he does all kinds of art and he is gonna be at western art week he is and so should you also another thing that's happening during western art week which will happen all the time during western art week is saint patrick's day (laughs) yes that's it's inevitable march 17th yep Uh, every year (laughs) there it's like clockwork people and charlie's birthday is always march 19th so So, mm. (laughs) it's a good chance unless something falls on a tuesday they're gonna be like the same weekend yeah so we do have a saint patrick's day parade gonna be happening downtown there is going to be some saint patrick's day festivities at the celtic cowboy which is the irish pub 
So you can go from green to Western, Irish to Western, just like that. Yeah. Drop of a hat. I'm pretty sure you'll be, you'll be able to hear the Irish music at the Celtic Cowboy in the Dark Horse Hall in Wine Snug. Where the show is. At the Hotel yeah. Irwin. So a lot coming up. Um, we promise we won't talk about Western Art Week next week. <laughs> but uh, no more promises after that, okay? Yeah. It's so, just... And oftentimes we've been asked to give quotes or share stories or explain what Western Art Week is. And there's just no way to put it into words. No, it's every year they want this. It's the same questions. Yeah. And you're like, well, just show up, show up um, or see my email f- from last year. Um, <laughs> it's new art, new artists, yeah. but it's the same overall feeling of a lot of excitement, a lot of things happening. And I would personally suggest that you guys, if it's your first one, go to an art auction. Yeah. Don't, don't bid. You don't have to, but just <laughs> experience that kind of energy. You know, years ago, and I don't know if it's happening this year. I probably should know if it's happening this year, but they out West show used to do a young artist exhibition. So like high school kids would have their art on display and they would auction some of that art off for scholarships. Yes. They are having that this year. Oh, thank goodness. That one is my favorite. <laughs> okay. They are. It's good. It's like you get to find the next Charlie Russell. Oh, okay. Like, oh yeah, I bought that. Yeah. And I'll give one shout out. Julia Grumo okay. was an artist in that. And now she is a very talented photographer. I don't know if she still does really sketches or drawings, but she's amazing. Oh. She's here in town. Awesome. High school kid. Really? That's now an adult. Okay. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm intrigued. But she stayed in the art field. Good. Good for her. Hey, guys, if we said anything wrong or you have additional tips for going to a Western or not Western. Yes. A, yes. 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 So Western Art Week. If you have tips for Western Art Week, send them our way. We will let other people know because this is what we think of from our limited knowledge. Right. If you're an artist out there and you're like, here's 10 things to not say to an artist. Well, those would be helpful. Give them to me. Yeah. <laughs> Just send me an email at information at visitgreatfalls.org or give me a call 406-761-4436. <laughs> and you can get all of this information at werenodamexperts.com. You bet. Um, the show notes that we were reading from right here. You can download the Montana's Base Camp official guide uh, from our website. Visit greatfallsmontana.org. Yeah, you can flip through it. Yeah. You don't even have to download it if you don't want to. You don't have to. You can just... But it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, guys. And if you decided you wanted your own copy and you're coming in, 15 Overlook Drive right here in Great Falls, Montana, you can meet us, the hosts of the podcast. And you can see the studio. You could. You could even sit and take your picture in it. We'd let you do that. We would? Yeah. For a fee. <laughs> 20 bucks. <laughs> Cause, because the rest... But we'd give you a sticker. Yeah. Um, the restrooms are for paying customers only. Yep. And we don't sell anything here, so... <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> so until we see your bright, smiling, shining, happy face here in Great Falls, we hope you're creating amazing memories, whatever you're doing with your friends and family. But seriously, get to Western Art Week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good. On the next episode of War No Damn Experts, hopefully we have that guest on the podcast that's going to talk murder and Lewis and Clark history. War No Damn Experts is produced by Great Falls, Montana Tourism with original music by the best damn musician, Jill Corda.